Okay. It's going to be a nice short lecture, catch up on time. So we're going to uh, go over and you be, be able to describe radiographic planning for circular fixation hexapods and understand a model of virtual osteotomy planning. We're going to start with, uh, it's going to be built around a case. So there's a 56-year-old diabetic and we, we called this a hypertrophic we had, a, we had a controversy uh, yesterday. This is a hypertrophic non-union. Okay, he has a failure of his plate. He has a deformity. I've used TraumaCAD to analyze his joint orientation angles. I've done a Tetzworth uh, malalignment test. So he's in varus, and uh, the varus is coming from his proximal tibia, which is obvious because it's trauma. But you still go through the you go through the exercise. So obviously his deformity should be right there where it's uh, broken. So your eyes will take you to that. So again, this is back into TraumaCAD. Um, and what I've done here is used a joint orientation angle to generate one axis. I've used a uh, anatomic axis to generate the distal axis. Two lines intersect form a Cora, they form an intersection point, and those two lines generate an angle or the apex. You can generate the magnitude, which is 18, and the location of the deformity. Using virtual software, you can then superimpose those two lines by rotating the exact amount, and that could be your correction virtually. So, this is the module uh, in TraumaCAD. Uh, basically, these are x rays I take in the OR. So they're amazing. I tell the tech exactly where to angle the beam to superimpose the top ring. They're calibrated. So this is a Smith & Nephew TSF. These calibration markers come in the kit. And TraumaCAD has a TSF module. So we're calibrating the images. You see TraumaCAD has a Taylor Spatial Frame module. It wants us to flip the image just for orientation. So this is how I plan um, the, the TSF. So again, this is... The TSF on that patient, these are the post-op x-rays taken in the OR, and this is either in the OR or a couple minutes later or whenever you want to do it in your clinic office. Um, and I'm using the software to now generate the deformity parameters, and in this case with this specific hexapod, the mounting parameters to then plug into the web-based software for this particular hexapod. Okay, so... This is how I do it today. So again, I'm su so they're telling me take this. This is our, our proximal reference ring. Uh, you basically make it superimposed. This is the osteotomy site you did on the AP. It's sort of fun. You swing it. You make it a little smaller. Superimpose it. This is the master tab. Master tab. Remember the master tab if you use TSF. So aligning the master tab here, master tab there, and then just jiggling it. Master tab. Okay, so now the computer, TraumaCAD knows where the reference ring is, where the osteotomy is, and the orientation of the master tab. It has all our uh, Paley Tetzworth orientation angles. So we're dropping down an 81 degree PPTA. We're then generating a line distally. This is just an anatomic axis line. It'll then generate the cora on the lateral or the apex of the formula on the lateral as well as the magnitude of the form. We'll do that same thing on the, a on the AP. I will choose my MPTA based on preoperatively what the LDFA is, assuming there's no intraarticular joint laxity. So I'm actually going back to the original to see this guy has an LDFA of 89. So I'm going to go and choose an 89 MPTA because I want an MAD of 0. There's some changes to 89. You'll see this line go whoop. A little bit there. Then I'll do a simple line distal. Okay, and you'll see. And you can change it to what makes sense. Meaning you know where the, a lot of these post-traumatic cases, you know where the non-union is, so you can make it so it'll fit. As you move this around and make it look like a bone, we talked about that yesterday in our private meeting. Sorry you weren't there. Um, <laughs> you make this look like a bone, and as you make it look like the bone, your deformity parameters change and your mounting parameters change. 
So this is the entire workflow of how I would plan a tibial hexapod using this virtual software. Really nothing else you need to do in terms of planning. I mean, you need to know how to mount the frame. Um, I get these x-rays and then you just plug these numbers into the computer. There's been some data. Uh, my colleagues have, have compared mounting parameters using TraumaCAD versus mounting parameters. We do it manually. Dr. Rosberg published on that and they're, they're very accurate. I think they're about the same. They're about the same. I still do both because I'm I haven't made the jump to total virtual. So you take the case pre-op and this is him uh, realigned. So the last case, uh, this is a 35 year old who has a fibula hemimyelia. He has a valgus uh, lower extremity. Again, we plug this image into TraumaCAD generate all our joint orientation angles. You have the Tetsworth malalignment test. The patient has valgus. Valgus coming from the proximal tibia. We're going to leave his femur alone. He's also short, but it's coming from his femur, so we're going to fix that at a later date. This I like. It's a bit analog, but it also just tells you how you, ch you choose how you want to assess these deformities. So. This is just a anatomic axis line down, anatomic axis line up, creating an apex here and a magnitude of 11.3. So if you chose to measure this deformity with this method, that's what you would get, okay? This is a joint orientation angle subtended at 90 degrees. Now you have a different magnitude 16.76 and a slightly different Cora. Here's an LDTA, so I'm using a joint orientation angle distally, joint orientation angle proximally. I'm getting a different magnitude, 17.83, and a slightly different Cora. Or you could do what we probably would do is a target mechanical axis. So we're going from the center of the femoral head through the knee at a godly choice that you make because you are God in these cases and you are choosing where his foot should be or where the future MAD should be. So you're doing this axis distally. You're going to do this axis proximally and that's going to generate a different angle and a different Cora. Then if you virtually cut the bone, you can see that's his new alignment. And then basically all you need to do, it's a bit of a joke, you just apply your TSF or any hexapod and uh, do your correction that way. So uh, in summary, I think we should tailor your treatment to the patient, make sure you understand where the deformities are coming from. Uh, you still need that, that chapter one, two, three, and four uh, in Paley's textbook. Uh, and really get a solid understanding of those uh, joint orientation angles. And then you can use acute and gradual corrections, and I would suggest you mastering some sort of software to uh, analyze deformity and then plan your osteotomies. Thank you very much.